this is better. Back in May of last year, the city received an email from Michigan State announcing the availability of a grant for small towns and cities that would help their communities learn about their strengths and weaknesses as seen by first-time visitors and first impressions tourists. Our Michelle Goodwin, who is right, good rich, right over there. I'm going to give up our names tonight. Yeah. Um, took the, the time to fill out the application and got us the grant. Subsequently, a committee consisting of city manager Elaine Levin, uh, DPW superintendent Mike Hittrich, city commissioner William Clausen, uh, city uh, planning commissioners Jacob uh, Bryson and myself, and uh, Trent Atbury, a realtor and now a member of the planning commission, got together with Andy Northrup from the university, uh, who explained and outlined what this program was going to be, the results of which he's going to present to you tonight. We hope you find the report interesting, informative, and encouraging about our city, and it will uh, stimulate you to come up with ideas on how to make the Marin City experience a better one for those of us who live there, who do business there, or people who visit. So without further ado, let me present this guy. I'm not going to give it. No, this, is, this is Andy Northrup from Michigan State University Extension. So Andy, please. Microphone, so I'm probably going to teeter in out of using this. But uh, so kudos to all of you for coming out tonight on this on this breezy evening. So um, I think we lost a couple of people that registered, but I'm sure we gained a few too. So a lot of information tonight. Uh, this is an assessment that we do statewide. Um, as Joe explained, your community applied for it before we get rolling on the results. I do want to share a little bit of background about MSU Extension at Eastern Michigan. <laughs> but I work uh, with an institute that focuses on community food and environment, and I am based in St. Clair County, uh, just up the road in the county building. Uh, part of Extension uh, that I work in focuses on these areas primarily related to food systems, entrepreneurship, leadership, and capacity building, primarily um, community and economic development. The one area that's kind of new for extension in the last few years is tourism, and I lead a statewide tourism team uh, comprised of folks like myself in the field as well as campus faculty. And several of the folks that um, I sort of heard on occasion are part of this assessment. They couldn't be here tonight because they had about a two and a half hour drive, and, and the chilly winds uh, scared them off. But um, MSU extension programs are open to everybody, so I have to be first and straightforward that this is a program that we uh, make sure that everybody's invited and if they can attend, they attend. The agenda is going to look pretty much like this. We're going to be here pretty much for the full two hours unless you have zero questions, but I find that to believe because there's a lot of information here and folks will probably want to probe it a bit further. I know I would if I were a resident of the city. So uh, I'm going to we did welcomes. I'm uh, going to do an overview of the program, and then we're going to dive right into the results. And we will take a break, probably an hour or so from now. And then we do have a list of suggestions that come out of this, purely just suggestions. And then we do have some time for Q&A, which will be probably about 10 minutes or so. And, um, and then we will hear from the Marine City community leadership team, which are the folks that Joe just outlined uh, were essential to applying for the program that we're doing it tonight. And then we'll have some, just some small conclusions at the end. So I wish we had a lot of time to go around the room and, and hear from everybody and, and where you're from, but I've seen the registration list, so I have a pretty good idea of how many faces here tonight, and, uh, and certainly some new faces too. So. I'm going to kind of teeter between stage and, and uh, floor, hopefully, and without having to use this mic, but um, you'll notice in about an hour and a half I'll start to lose my 
point, so just bear with me. So this is a program that was sponsored, uh, it's an MSU Extension program, it was sponsored by the Prosperity Region 6, which is a seven county partnership, St. Clair County is part of that partnership. Uh, along with Sanilac, Huron, Tuscola, Lapeer, Shiawassee, and Genesee County, primarily Thumb and the I-69 corridor counties. The Prosperity Region, since 2017, late 2016, has funded multiple first impressions tourism assessments across this seven county partnership. So, Marine City is currently um, one of six. We have two communities that were just approved, so there will be eight by the end of 2019 that have gone through this program. I'll explain which the other communities are in a few minutes. Green City obviously is sponsoring this event tonight too, um, hosting the event and so forth. So, uh, kind of repeating myself here a little bit, but your community leadership team are made up of these folks. So, if those, if everybody is in the room tonight, would you just mind standing for a few minutes to give um, everybody an understanding of who you are and how we got to where we are? Great. Uh, so these are the folks that apply for the program. So along with Michelle Goodrich, right? You know? So I uh, just want to make give credit to those folks here tonight. So I want to give a bit of a background on first impressions and uh, how we got to where we are, so people have a general context of where these programs come from. This is an international program. It started in Wisconsin in the 90s from the University of Wisconsin's Extension Office. As you can see, all those pretty red dots covering Wisconsin indicates how many times the program has been done. If you look to the east, you'll notice Ontario is covered in red dots as well, and then there's lovely, the Great Lakes State in the middle that has only two red dots. Those two red dots are the pilot programs that were started in 2016. And uh, these currently aren't all the red dots that the programs have been done. Oregon does the program as well, but you can see that I showed this to demonstrate the magnitude of this type of program, which is initially built on the impressions of first-time visitors and communities. And so Ontario uses the program for a different reason, uh, similar reasons, excuse me. Wisconsin uses it for community economic development. Um, modifications to the program since the 90s have covered county fairs, uh, business corridors, main streets, uh, tourism, and uh, has been targeted at youth leadership and emerging leaders, of course, strengthening capacity within communities uh, that we see on our community leadership teams. Our program is quite unique. We've taken it a few steps further than all the other states that are using this program. Uh, that's a mouthful. I don't particularly expect you to read this. But we use the, press, the impressions of first-time visitors to, again, guide community economic development, but given the challenges that Michigan has had in the last 10 years and the, the interest that communities have on when, wanting to get on board with the Pure Michigan Campaign and the state's revitalization, I identified this program as a way to get communities to, to take action through the eyes of first-time visitors. So um, we focus on building leadership, even though there might be leadership that already exists, strengthening the capacity and essentially helping communities understand their strengths and weaknesses through the eyes of first-time visitors. So, as I said, we started this out in 2016. Prosperity Region 6 funded four of these in 2017, pretty much this up the center of the thumb and then to the west in Seaboing. Tremendous success has come from those communities uh, as a result of participating in the program. We certainly can't take all the credit, nor will we. But, um, and then 2018, the program is spread across the state, uh, in addition to your community here, as well as Cass City up in Tuscola County. And then in 2019, our year now, uh, actually St. Clair just applied for this in the community of Langsburg in Shiawassee County. So St. Clair, if anybody's from St. Clair in the audience, you will be going through this process as well, uh, with results probably sometime in November. So they were just informed. So. A lot of interest in the program um, um, for all the right reasons. I just want to give a bit of an overview again about how we got here. Um, usually people at the end kind of are like, well, wait a minute, how did this happen? So other than the Prosperity Region supporting what the program and funding it completely, we require that a community leadership team forms in advance of the application. We require that so that we understand that there's capacity within the communities to take action. We have had communities in the past apply where 
it was clearly written by one person or didn't have sort of a collective um, collective approach and we've we've turned down communities because we want to make sure that there is um, recipes for success so um, your community leadership team applied uh, we conducted a kickoff meeting as Joe said earlier uh, a team of visitors came to Marine City uh, in the summer which I'll tell you uh, when in, in a few moments and a few slides and then uh, we had our own internal meetings and results summarized and then we're on number six and it's highlighted in red that's where we are tonight so this essentially is the end of the program and the results get shared your community leadership team organized this event tonight and, and I drove down from Port Huron to share the results after I leave here tonight it's up to them to choose to do what they want to with the results perhaps with the help of people in the audience tonight um, or not and then we have a written report and then I conduct follow-up with the community at a minimum of six months more like closer probably to a year I'll, I'll meet with the community leadership team again and we'll just try to gauge uh, what's happened as a result of the program other states uh, see tremendous success in the program happen quickly every community is different um, and uh, sometimes things happen overnight and sometimes they take much longer so it's just um, depends on how the community uh, chooses to move forward. So, I need to move this for a second. As I get older, my eyes are uh, <laughs> doing funny things on me. Doesn't get better. Yeah, I know, that's what they tell me. Hopefully that's... So, there are a few things to consider. And this is a pretty much blanket slide that we share with every community, regardless if it's a really significant tourist town or not we want people to know in the audience that this isn't a program to sort of provide the channels for you to become the next tourist town it's really not designed to provide those answers uh, and turn things around overnight um, it is basically a program to let you know what tourists or visitors think of your, your hometown believe it or not and I think your community understands this probably more than uh, some that I've worked with is that every community gets visitors I often hear when I do this first impressions program that um, people in the audience will say well we don't get any visa visitors but every community gets visitors whether they're there to kayak or go to church or swing by and pick up gas or, or simply just go for a walk in the park every community gets visitors so the purpose of the program is to spawn ideas and collaborations and um, we've had quite a bit of success doing that uh, it's not criticism although it may appear to be um, we try and balance this with pros and cons pretty much down the middle 50 50 sometimes they're heavier on one side than the other uh, in your case tonight um, I would say things are more positive than negative for Marine City and um, a couple things to remember if we can let's try and keep questions and comments to the end because we have about 59 other slides to go through tonight and uh, it's cold and I'm sure folks are probably want to get home before before too long so uh, we have left some time at the end for questions and comments and um, certainly will be able to answer those questions relative to the assessment I can't answer questions about the future and, and the direction that the city is going the community leadership teams here for that um, and they'll be around to answer questions too so uh, at the end I have an evaluation I kind of have to throw that out there uh, that um, helps me understand and helps my tourism team understand um, whether or not you think this program was of value to Marine City so before you run out the door I'm gonna, Joe and I are going to tackle you and see if you would take one of our surveys for us we won't really tackle you but, uh, and that's optional of course so uh, I'm going to jump into the results before I do that I'm going to get a drink Water. <laughs> <laughs> Probably kick that over. Um, so, uh, if I'm talking too fast, just kind of wave your hand and say, "Hey, give me a second here." Um, and again, I'm having to look at my slides here from a bizarre distance, but it'll work out just fine. So. I'm going to give you an overview of who came to your town because that's really the one thing that people really like to know off the bat who came to Marine City so you had five visitors and um, three of them were female two were male uh, one was a millennial two identified as Gen X and two identified as baby boomers uh, all were from the lower peninsula of Michigan all Michigan residents 
And uh, four out of the five were from MSU Extension, and one of them was from Genesee County Metropolitan Planning, who works with us on the Prosperity Region 6 initiative. And um, four out of the five were first-time visitors to Marine City. One of the assessors had been here before, but uh, certainly didn't come with any sort of assessment manual in your hand, which changes your perspective when you're doing this kind of work. Um, all Caucasian, it's probably where the program sh comes short a little bit as uh, we are uh, challenged to find diversity in our assessment teams, uh, in case anybody's interested. When did we come? We, we open up a six week window when we do this program and usually I carve out, um, um, well, a six week window uh, we got a little bit late start this year. Normally we do these assessments right around July or August. This year we started September and October. Um, two people came on a Friday, one on a Monday. Uh, Saturday and Sunday were also visited. And um, people in the audience like to know that because it can change the perspective of how a community looks, right? And we come every day of the week, or we try to come at a diverse time of the first time of the week because that's what tours do. But yeah, most come on the weekends, right? Show up on a Saturday or Friday night, but also visitors show up on a Tuesday and they show up on a Wednesday and they come Thursdays at six and things like that. So um, we try and replicate that as best we can. Uh, one spent the night and four came for day visits and they spent anywhere from six to probably ten hours at most here. Um, so most folks that were in the community visiting you were from the pretty much everywhere from Lansing to Metro Detroit to Flint and in between. Okay. Yeah. I think we had one person come down from Traverse City. Um, one visited with their family, one visited with their spouse, and three came by themselves. So you had five assessors. The opinions here are from five assessors, but there were other people with the assessors, and that certainly influences the results and the content and the impacts and so forth. So um, it might be fair to say you kind of have the opinions of more like seven or eight. So we conduct pre we we conduct excuse me. Uh, we do pre-assessment research. We spend about six to twenty-four hours in the community, and that's of course if we spend the night or here much longer. Uh, we complete a 38-page written assessment, which fits in the back of our pocket. It's pretty, pretty lengthy. We submit our 10 best photos. That all come to me. And if I didn't cap that at 10, we, I'd get probably 300 pictures that I just couldn't possibly sort through. So I ask people to give me their 10 best, why they took those photos, uh, and what significance it has for both us as assessors and, of course, for the community. We enter data within 48 hours. and. Um, we provide input and we have our own internal debrief. We meet, we come to the communities by ourselves. So maybe I didn't convey that earlier. We sometimes come with our partners and so forth. But as assessors, we don't come as a team um, currently, although we're looking at future programs doing it collectively in one go. We, we think avoiding groupthink is probably better currently for these types of this type of work. So here's the assessment. Uh, and this is what it looks like. Uh, when I say 38 pages, Probably you're some of like some of you are kind of like oh my gosh that's a thesis and it pr probably could be but it's a 38 page manual and it fits in our back pocket um, and uh, we have 12 parts to that uh, each of these parts I'm going to share with you tonight so when I said I've got about 50 slides I mean it and they're packed full of information and that's why we're here the community leadership team was given a report and that's a summary of this which. Um, uh, so this is really the meat of the program, just to want to be clear. So we have, uh, prior to the visit, we have our initial five-minute impression once we arrive. We uh, have a quantitative section on community information. We look at visitor motives, destination, we evaluate the destination. We spend time in the residential areas, and um, we visit tourism assets. So this part's really important because I know there's a lot of local businesses here and entrepreneurs, as there should be. Um, one thing to remember is that during the public forum, we do our best to not shame any local businesses. That's not the objective. We're not here to embarrass anybody. Um, with that said, there might be pictures in the presentation that 
you may recognize and just draw a conclusion that it might be so-and-so's business. It's, it's, uh, we're blind to that, so uh, we're not doing it deliberately, so just bear with, you know, keep that in mind. Uh, we assessed the main downtown business area, and uh, we developed, rightfully so, a waterfront community section with our colleagues in Sea Grant and some campus faculty that I work with. Given Michigan has 20% of the world's fresh water, we started thinking, hmm, we probably should have something that looks at coastal communities. So uh, you are the second community to have the assessment applied to um, waterfront access and so forth, which we'll get into. We look at census and safety, um, which often is really hard to gauge from an outsider perspective. Police reports is about the only thing that gauges that type of thing. Uh, and then lasting impressions and trip reflection. So the section 11 and 12 are really um, uh, information that, uh, sections of the assessment that draws out um, when people leave at a destination, they always have reflections on what they were doing. And so we have a series of questions that draws out um, lasting impressions and reflections. And we try and match that up with all of this. Um, so, a lot of information tonight. So, I'm going to get into the results. And um, are there any pressing questions right now? I know I said I was going to wait till the end, but okay, I'll just take one. Good question. Yeah, I will save it as a PDF. This will go to the community leadership team, and they will have that, and then they will choose to do what they want with it. But um, it is open. It's an open source, so we can make it available. Here after if anyone wants to just yeah. I can email it out. I mean, as a, the university, it's open to the public. So, uh, so here we go. Results. So prior to the visit, um, we spend all assessors by ourselves, separate from one another, about two hours researching communities before we go into them. Give or take, we spend time using our smartphones because that's how decisions are made these days, of course, through tablets and laptops as well. So we research your community to get a better understanding of what happens in your community, what's here, what can we do. Uh, we search for events, things to do within the time frame that we've um, established. We, of course, we visit YouTube, Facebook, uh, sometimes Pure Michigan's website. We Google you. We look at TripAdvisor. And we do the things that tourists do because we are that. We are coming as visitors to your community. And fortunately uh, for your community, we have a data management specialist on campus that was able to compile an extensive amount of online research for your community um, through TripAdvisor. So this is actually the next few slides of the first time I'm presenting on this type of thing. No other community before you has gotten an in-depth look of what they look like through TripAdvisor, from what I understand it. So according to that, 75% of your accommodation available to tourists in the area in Marine City are vacation rentals. About 8% of those are hotels. Uh, according to TripAdvisor, that comes out to be one hotel in the area. Two have two motels or B&Bs have been identified. So the majority of accommodation in the area is a vacation home rentals. Uh, seven of those landed on Airbnb. Um, three to four of the accommodations landed in TripAdvisor and Google Maps, and one landed on VRBO. So out of all of the accommodation that's available in Marin City, of the vacation rentals, you had 90 reviews. Of the hotels, there were 99 reviews, and there were 130 reviews of the motels and the B&Bs. So these are your average stars rating. So for folks that uh, do pay attention to TripAdvisor and, and sort of these um, social media platforms that guide tourist activity, this is probably pretty um, useful information. This will accompany the report in a later day. So we have taken a, the most common words used to describe your accommodation in Marine City. We made a cloud, a word cloud. These are some of the words that stood out from people that have visited Marine City in the accommodation sector. So you see comfortable, wonderful, great. Um, not too many negative words there that I can find, although some words certainly aren't relative, um, maybe such as wedding. Um, but moving forward, 
We also did this for visitor attractions. And so these, this is how TripAdvisor um, has identified things for you to do in your community. And you'll see that Algonac State Park is listed as the first thing. And that's, yeah. Is it five stars total? Yeah. Okay. Good question. Uh, so you'll see that Algonac State Park is listed there, and I'm sure there's some people in the audience that are thinking, well, hang on a second, Algonac State Park is in Algonac, and it's not going to be in the city. Tourists don't know that. So the tourists that are coming, they're seeing Algonac State Park as something to do here, and whether it's Algonac City Lines, Marine City City Lines, the division lines aren't obvious to tourists, and they probably never will be unless um, it's really spelled out. Um, and so the Riverbank Theater came up, but probably shouldn't surprise anybody. The Mariner, the Snug, the Sweet Tooth, and Gore's Bar. And um, so this is just a way to... Gore's <laughs> and What's that? Oh, anyway. Uh, so some, some cloud, word clouds to describe those attractions that um, we came up with that were in TripAdvisor. So this is a, a statistics tool called Tabloid that, that quantifies these words and the significance of them. So this should give a pretty good indication of things to do. We also did this for restaurants using TripAdvisor. So the Marine Fish Company, Marine City Fish Company, Anita's Little Bar, the Sweet Tooth, and Blue Pipe Cantina. The Sweet Tooth found, it found itself also on the um, things to do list in TripAdvisor. So these are the things that are popping up as most popular in Marine City. So uh, that's the reason I'm showing you this stuff. And um, that's a cloud word, word cloud, excuse me, describing those restaurants. So you'll get to see wonderful, amazing, delicious, dinner, excellent, um, and of course some words that don't really fit in. Um, and so we just do this to give people an understanding of what other outsiders are saying about the community. These, these results right here aren't from the five assessors. The five assessors did research prior to the visit uh, by Googling, coming up, visiting local websites, Facebook, spending time on social media, looking for things to do as I indicated earlier. So when we asked to how the assessment works is that we ask these specific questions, which websites were most helpful. And at the same time, we also ask which websites were the, were the least helpful. So we're trying to start with the positive first, but overall the chamber was selected for the most helpful. That means four selected that. The city website was also selected as the most helpful by two people. Um, two people went on to say that the results were um, equal between both of those websites. And one person did point out that Michigan.org was useful, which isn't always the case. I had to call them out. But uh, what was helpful, people found that the website was easy to navigate, uh, listed events and places to visit, uh, organized businesses nicely. Uh, four out of five agreed that the information was presented, um, was well presented, and that the pages were visually appealing. So with that said, we also asked the assessors uh, prior to the visit which, what were challenges with the most helpful website. And a few people noticed that uh, uh, the website lacked links and had um, uh, limited links on information and businesses. Uh, one person commented that there were no maps on the website for them to help navigate uh, Marine City at the time. Now remember, this is in September. Things change quickly, so there's very websites can be completely different within hours. Um, inactive links were found. I think I mentioned that already. Uh, easy to find information. 40% uh, again. That's two people. Two out of five uh, disagreed with that. Uh, and three out of five agreed that more information is needed on the most helpful websites. And this is a general theme across both. Um, we also uh, asked people which forms of social media did they, did they use prior to visiting. It's not a requirement that people spend any time using social media, but given that uh, the significance of it, um, people often do. So it shouldn't be a surprise too much that most people went to Facebook. Um, and a few people went to YouTube. Um, I'm not sure how valuable pin interest or Twitter is. Uh, we probably should list TripAdvisor on here, but um, TripAdvisor often shows up in the other section. One person found that the um, um, YouTube vids were, YouTube videos were helpful in showcasing what the community was putting forward. 
Facebook gave them a better understanding of local events. Um, one person at the bottom didn't really find anything on social media to be of use to guide their visit prior to arriving. Um, and that could be a preference and, and uh, could also be rooted in, in the lack of information. So here's a big question, uh, and some of these answers probably shouldn't come as much of a surprise because we asked assessors how do they visualize Marine City prior to coming? And remember, four out of the five have never been here before, so they're really just shooting in the dark, probably making assumptions that um, based on, on, on what they know of the area. Um, small and empty, uh, small town Michigan with a water view. Um, picture the town being a lot smaller with less stuff to do. I didn't think there'd be so much going on. A uh, small town with maritime history, but a community that was mostly connected with the larger St. Clair River, Blue Water region, and that person wasn't sure what deciphered your community from the next. So again, this is prior to the visit, right? They don't know anything other than perhaps what they've seen on the website. So when we, so we're moving into section two of the assessment, and I'm not going to read these, I'm just going to leave these up here for you, but this is the initial five minute impression when people roll into town. Now where we define town, it, we, we don't set a parameter. So the moment somebody exits 94 and starts driving into Marine City, that may be a part of this statement. It may be only a part when they get out of their car uh, and to walk around your downtown, or it might be over by the camera. So I'll just wait a minute. Those are two responses, of course. once people arrive in town, their perception immediately changes. That shouldn't surprise anybody. Can I move forward? No? Okay, I'm going to move forward. So at the same time, during this section, we ask people, uh, assessors, excuse me, uh, if they would feel compelled to stop if they were randomly passing by, I realize Marine City is not some way that people randomly <laughs> sort of drive by, but the question still is uh, valid. Uh, if they were in the immediate area, would they stop? All of them said yes, and to one was somewhat uh, yes. But um, So that's a pretty good sign. It isn't always the case when we're doing this program. Um, uh, so, Moving on to section three, community information. Um, this section's a little bit small, and uh, some of the questions uh, might not necessarily apply to Marine City, but we pose them anyway in this quantitative section, and we do ask if directions were accurate. Oftentimes they are. We think we blame that on Google and, and MapQuest and so forth. That shouldn't surprise anybody. Um, but coming into the community was it easy, find, easy to find a visitor center. Now, I realize you might not have a visitor center, but if you do, and I don't know if you do, uh, we couldn't find it. So was it easy to find the community regional tourist brochure? What I did here, and this is important for me to point out, you got kind of this, this is supposed to be orange, um, this brown color if you scored three or more into that area. You, you got the green light if you scored uh, three or more into the agree section, if that makes sense. So it was easy to find a map of the town or the community. Again, this is when they're in the community, not prior to. So now this is part of the on-the-ground assessment. Uh, three people out of the five uh, disagreed that it was easy to find a map of the town or the community. Uh, information booth kiosks, how 
tourist located attractions and services. Um, somewhat, people somewhat agree. Now, of course, some of this you may feel is, is, doesn't apply, but again, the general question is, is that if there is information out there, sometimes it's easily accessible and sometimes it's not. This is the outcome of that. So, section four, visitor motives. Top three reasons you think visitors come to the destination. And this is the, the full list, and uh, all assessors are asked to rate, as I said, their top three. Um, relax and visit historical sites, and shopping are the three that hit the top the most. Um, experience unique culture, get, enter get entertained, engage in sports. And one, believe it or not, said uh, waterfront and freighters. I was really glad that response came in. Because um, that's obviously quite unique to this um, part of the country, I'll say. Um, so, and then the rest uh, didn't get any remarks. So that's uh, pretty interesting. Uh, we've done this, of course, in other communities uh, throughout the thumb and the state. And uh, one community in particular, without naming them, never envisioned their community to be a place where people relaxed. And so as a result of getting that uh, as a result of that result, um, they're actually looking at marketing their community as a place where people might want to come and relax, rather than trying to pump the fishing trips and uh, uh, you know the local brewery and stuff. Like perhaps we need to change our angle. Just an idea. It's not something that we say has to happen. So destination evaluation. So this is always a big one. We quantify this section in the beginning because it just brings a little bit more um, less subjectiveness to it. Uh, so that's a long list, and now we'll let you sort of gander at it. What I did over here on the right is just enlarge the top four sections where you scored the highest, um, and the bottom four where you scored the lowest. And everything in between is certainly equally as important. I just wanted to be able to highlight that. So safety and security, cleanliness, visitor accessibility to attractions, and hospitality were some of the highest. So. Um, that's certainly something to be uh, proud of, I think. Uh, Nature-based activities, quality of accommodation, and well-known landmarks seem to score at the lowest. I realize perhaps that adventure-based activities might not be something that Marine City is trying to say they do have, but again, this is part of a ranking system, and we do rank it, and it helps communities to think that um, perhaps if they wanted to be an adventure-based activity destination that they need to improve. Um, this stuff, as I said, is equally valuable. Um, you may wonder why the scoring is 13 and 12 with only five assessors, and we have a point system that we apply and factors in through um, statistics and, and to, to, to bring the ranking system. Um, it's kind of confusing. So with that quantitative section also comes qualitative responses. And so we definitely want to have some qualitative responses backing up why people chose those, um, these uh, quantitative parts. And so I'll leave this up here, and we'll read through it. But um, those are the responses of three people. I have left out all five responses in some cases, because we probably wouldn't get to a line for you at all. So you'll probably notice in some of the, the some of the qualitative sections, people naturally start making suggestions, and um, there will be a section at the end of this where the suggestions are actually packaged up and presented. So, so there might be some repeats um, points, such as more wayfinding is needed, which might might or might not surprise people. Um, um, so with that said. We also, in the destination evaluation portion, ask the assessors, the destination, the community that they're visiting, who might it be attracted to? Which, which following cohort of generations might find this area, this location, most um, attractive? So when I do this program, a lot of the communities are like, we want millennials. And I'm sure someone here agrees with that. But, um, and so they're often wanting this assessment to be for millennials, but to, to be fair to all other generations, we try to have a diverse demographic and of, of, of age groups. But um, people identified pretty much equal across the board here. Um, they have explained why they feel that way. 
Uh, one person in particular said it's quite close to Detroit and of course Canada uh, with a unique culture and close to water with activities and events for families. So that's some of the things that they've identified that your community has um, as an attraction. Um, this person in particular said they selected all of the generations because they see there's something for everyone here. Um, existing infrastructure, obvious draw to the water, investments could be expanded upon events and activities for every age group. That same section of the assessment also asks people, assessors, excuse me, uh, are there attractions or events this destination is for? So this part's really important, uh, and all of it is important, but this really tells community what stands out both when assessors are in the community, but also prior to coming, right? And so if there's a lot of efforts to sort of push this pumpkin palooza, uh, for example, event or Comic Con and things like that, these are standing out to the assessors. Now maybe they were here during Pumpkin Palooza. I don't think anybody was, but at least they recognized it or um, you know the ferry to Canada, uh, again Algonac State Park keeps servicing for all the right reasons. Um, and theater scene, antique shop. So those things are standing out as assets. At the same time, we also ask people what would they, um, uh, any assets that they would feel, would feel compelled to visit if they returned. So this implies that the people that were here as the assessors didn't really get to visit these assets, but they recognized them, they saw them, and these are the things that might draw people to come back. So this could lead into, well, where do we allocate resources? Maybe looking at some of these assets and, and businesses um, um, might be the way. Paddle the Blue Ways, Kayaking the Bell River, the Bridge the Bridge Bay Trail stood out, the Heather House B&B, um, the local bakery got quite a bit of recognition, um, the Riverfront, of course, um, the Music Shop, um, Vera Grace, the Heritage Museums. So some of these things are probably, you know this already, but um, a bit short-time visitors and, and long-time visitors, overnighters are seeing these things as well. So that should validate, I think, quite a bit, probably the direction we're headed. We also spend time in the residential area. Not a lot. Um, this, this part, you know, uh, people can kind of feel a little awkward just strolling around and we often stand out, you know. We don't come wearing MSU shirts and green hats and stuff, but we do come dressed as visitors and often visitors stand out. Right? one way or another, um, although we don't wear the Hawaiian shirts. But um, most of the folks thought that the residential area was good. Um, one said excellent, and that of course is contingent upon where they go, but for the most part, people did wander, I think, on the north side of the city as well as um, uh, the west, coming in from the west, uh, off 94. Um, Homes and yards are well kept, many the homes were decorated for the season, which made for a beautiful setting. Uh, generally quite impressed with the residential area, lots of variety, architecture. One, one of our assessors to campus tourism faculty really emphasized uh, the architectural uniqueness of Wayne City, which um, um, is not something you see uh, in quite a few communities. Uh, but at the same time, uh, somebody noticed the north side homes are quite unique. West of the city, too, there seem to be some unique Victorian homes, but like any town, there are areas where some housing is run down. And that assessor in particular was talking more around the, the marina area, I believe. Nothing against that area, I don't know it from the back of my hand, but um, that was, was mentioned. So if you're looking for more unique sort of location, that's what we're speaking about. So tourism assets visited. Uh, I mentioned earlier, um, we're not going to shame any business. Certainly we'll give kudos to businesses in the public forum that we're doing tonight, but our goal isn't to name, shame any businesses. But with that said, part of this report has a lengthy piece to it where these tourism assets get rated and comments get provided. And every business that we were in and every public park we were in and every beach that we swam on uh, gets a review, and that review will go to the community leadership team. And it's up to them if they, it's up to them as to when and how they circulate that information to the public and the private sector that represents your community. We 
strongly encourage them to do that, and, but it'll be up to them as to how they choose to do that and, and when and so forth. But um, so um, again, all of those assets we mentioned earlier, if somebody was in the business, we checked the box, we rated it good, poor, excellent, and then we provide comments as to why. Some of that has a lot to do with customer service, experience, accessibility, a variety of things. But we were in um, accommodation. We were in, I believe, some municipal offices. We certainly were in public parks, cultural attractions, and we certainly recreated. One person brought their bike. One person brought a kayak but never used it. Um, neighborhoods, businesses, so forth and so on. So, um, I to see you more. destination, excuse me, downtown business area. So, maybe I didn't say this earlier, but the assessment isn't just downtown. And I think, I think that's pretty clear, but if it's not, I need to clarify that. Um, some folks will arrive into a community like yours and naturally they gravitate towards the most active spot and typically that's a vibrant downtown like the one you have. Um, but as a part of our responsibility as assessors, we um, do venture out and, and uh, but with that said, we also have a quantified section looking at your downtown. So um, areas of green space, parking is secure, parking is reasonable, Perhaps there's no charges for that matter, which is why it's reasonable, I'm not quite sure. Um, and then you can see further down the list, um, and this helps again, the same, same sort of um, uh, tabbing structure was applied to this, if you're wondering why the score was so high. But uh, you know, down at the bottom is where the community score particularly low. Walking paths were uh, not seen as available, and if they're there, that means that folks would be able to locate them. Um, vehicle traffic has managed to encourage pedestrian movement. Uh, some of us really felt that the time that we were here, it was rather dangerous walking around downtown. Some of you may feel that way on a busy Saturday. Um, uh, gateway point enter. We didn't really notice a gateway point, although perhaps the geographic boundaries, um, perhaps nice housing versus semi-nice was maybe an indicator of that, but we didn't see any gateway signage. Uh, bike lanes, uh, we didn't see any, but knowing that there was a pretty well-known bike trail here. Uh, so I'll share a little information on some of our assessors. They like it when I do this. Um, one assessor in particular likes to share with communities, if she comes to these, that um, she is a baby boomer lesbian and her partner is African-American. And so she likes communities to know that because when she does these assessments, she's often walking around with her partner who's an African-American woman, and so she's quite sensitive, maybe sometimes oversensitive, but um, to how they're treated. But regardless, some of that has, has a lot to do with how her reactions are in a community. I'm guessing that's her response. Regardless, it doesn't matter. Another one of our sisters is is married um, cross-culturally, cross-racially. Uh, uh, that person's spouse is from another country, and she, uh, the spouse is Asian. And so they, too, do these assessments often together uh, and do take note of perhaps how people uh, interact with them being multiracial, multicultural families. So, so when, you say, when I say you had five assessors and you had a couple extra people coming along, they were people of color as the family visitors. And um, so that plays into some of how the responses get written, which I think is valuable for the audience to know. Um, with that, there's also additional points to make here. Um, same section eight. Um, this person in particular said that everyone they talked with were open, friendly, helpful, willing to spend time to talk on recommendations. Comments here on the young person that they interacted uh, didn't know the answers to questions about town and amenities. It gave, I think I understand it as inaccurate information, but overall all seemed happy to live and work in the area, which was good to see. Um, people report above a resurgence of development and activity and tourists in the last few years. So I'm, I'm guessing that to be true since the uh, economic crash we've kind of rebounded from that, I guess we have. Uh, this person in particular commented on that economic vibrancy. 
Uh, quite an economic environment, strong downtown with unique boutique shops, sustainable, I should say sustained by public and private investment, and ample foot traffic, which is rare to see in downtown rural America, rural Michigan, I should say. So um, that, that's a compliment. Uh, waterfront assessment. So uh, not everybody is super athletic and breaks their swimsuit and jumps in the water and paddle boards, but we try to incorporate some of those folks depending on where we go. Um, well, with that said, um, being so close to the water, we all did experience it to what extent uh, it varies, uh, but most of us felt the waterfront the overall quality of the host community's waterfront infrastructure, again that's just the infrastructure, was good. Um, very inviting water parks, ample public space, limited seating, not sure everybody agreed with that when we did our debrief, but regardless somebody felt that way. Um, signage was not as strong as it could be. Uh, there was quite a bit of talk of a B&B trail here that is in Marine City, and, and not all of us were able to experience that or even um, we weren't even aware of it until after we did the assessment. But a lot of mention of that. Um, that same person had quite a bit to say about the Catholic school uh, parking lot um, being such prime real estate, why pave it? I mean, it's probably been there for decades, but um, we can't really. Uh, again, first time visitors, that's our impression. That was this person's impression. Uh, there's only one waterfront, why, why pave it for cars? Is kind of the argument. This person in particular is an urban planner, works across the state on downtown development. Waterfront assessment continues. What area do you think is excellent? Um, playground, beach, um, the fact that the playground and swimming beach is clo so closely connected to downtown, um, such a fantastic amenity, amazing asset that can be used by residents, several local park access points from downtown. Um, that probably shouldn't be much of a surprise, but at the same time, we also ask what is not so excellent. And um, <laughs> that's probably for now. <laughs> <laughs> but we got to put it in. Um, the marina needs to be invited and or upgraded. Um, uh, parking, and again, if there's the marina owner in the audience, we're not here to shame you. I don't know if that's a public asset or a private asset. That wasn't clear to us. Um, so apologies, marina owners here. Uh, parking area in front of the Catholic school, that's a repeat. Longer walking trail along the river would be very nice. And again, this is people are answering this question in sort of like if all in a perfect world, what could we have, right? But they're also answering in like, yeah, this is probably something you might want to consider. So just take it with a grain of salt. Um, this one particular person came with their wife and an infant, you know, young child and felt that the time of day that they were here around the beach area, there probably could be some benefit in having some signage there to encourage people to slow down on that, um, on that bend. It's probably been talked about before. Um, so you, getting kind of near to the end of the assessment, um, using senses and safety, this is something usually people in the audience giggle about. I haven't heard anybody laughing yet. But um, small town, rural communities further into the thumb, they often don't have pleasant smells, and so, um, but they often don't realize that. So uh, fortunately, nobody experienced any pleasant or unpleasant smells in Marine City, which is something to be thankful for. Um, and at the same time, did they experience any unpleasant sounds in the community as well, or pleasant, and all of us said no. Um, so maybe it wasn't always that way, but um, certainly was when we were here during those six weeks. At the same time, uh, we also asked if all assessors had felt welcome when they were here. And all of us said yes. This is rare for all of these questions. Um, uh, so you can see that um, this is really important for the chamber director and of course the local businesses and everybody in between that um, people felt welcome to walk in and out of their storefronts. It's not always the case. Um, try not to name any other communities and we're pretty good at it, but um, uh, we often don't see this. In fact, oftentimes we don't uh, feel welcome. But, Fortunately, almost everyone, uh, this one particular person met was friendly, open, generous with the time and conversation. 
the entire downtown is welcoming. Perhaps back Porch Antiques in particular was that day. Certainly festive. Um, this is pretty, pretty, pretty good to see. So what was your most positive experience? So this is where we get into a lot of qualitative information and uh, we get into very positives and negatives and things that stand out. And again, we try and balance it. Um, you guys are heavier on the positive side because you've got a really nice, um, unique uh, niche in this part of the state. But um, I won't try and leave that. Although the one response, third one down, a lot of mention about the local bakery. Is the local bakery owner here today? No, it is a great place. So, uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, so this particular person is a planner that had made that comment about the bakery, and regardless of the profession, I think they would still say the same thing. I think it's critical for communities to have shops like these and make a lasting impression on visitors. So you've got quite a few of them, and several stood out to all of us that were here. Certainly the downtown parks and, and, and coupled with the businesses had a lot to do with uh, positive experiences. Um, again, one person at the bottom there, Overall, just the foot traffic activity was, was great to see during the time of uh, year that they were here. Um, and uh, some of the more eclectic shops, such as the music store was mentioned, and, and a, few, uh, a few of the others, restaurants included. Um, this is pretty significant, too. Um, so with positives comes negatives, of course. And uh, I'll just leave those there. So I'm going to focus on the bottom two here. Uh, the first one, a local restaurant, and it says in Italic C report, that's that tourism asset piece I was mentioning earlier where all assessors rate the private and public assets, and that is not in this because we don't want to shame any businesses, but will be given to the community leadership team and shared with them how they choose to at a later date. I also want to mention that one of the persons, uh, assessors that came here uh, brought their bike, um, didn't really use it too much, but did make a comment that um, your significant trail system here, which is pretty rare to see in other parts of the state, depending on where you're at, was really challenged to find that trail or a map to access that trail. Uh, and I don't know how much exploring they really did, you know, but how much time are people really going to put into finding that. I and mean, if it's not quick and accessible, you can pretty much count on people scrapping it, unless they're true diehard um, riders, kayakers, connoisseurs type thing. Uh, but it wasn't visible, and um, so uh, nothing against this rack. This was pretty impressive, but um, um, they couldn't figure out sort of how to get onto the trail, perhaps ride north or even south. Um, so just throwing that out there um, for clarity. So what destination strengths? Probably a lot of these, if not all of them, are pretty obvious, but this is what we identified through our debrief and through our uh, this section of the report, um, getting close to the end here. Certainly a lot of variety, places to see and shop, three cultural venues, relaxing atmosphere. Again, there's that relaxing uh, component that we talked about earlier. The riverfront and Bell River, apologize if we can misspell words here. b, &B Trail, strong economic base, and some of us witness an active public-private sector partnership leveraging assets, and uh, probably the coastline has a lot to do with that. Um, so we recognize those things in, in summary. At the same time, uh, when looking at strengths, we're also looking for challenges. So a bit of background on, on the professions of the people that were in your community, and I hope I get this right. One is a um, certified, two of them, excuse me, are certified planners. One focuses on downtown urban development. The other one focuses on transportation. One's from MSU, one is from Genesee County. One of the other assessors was an executive director from an art and cultures nonprofit organization across the state. 
The fourth was a tourism doctorate of tourism, campus faculty, long time campus faculty in, uh, in MSU. And then the other one is a field faculty with a background in sustainability and tourism, community development work. Uh, that's me, the last one. Uh, and so the biggest challenges that we came up with was we try to give some nuts and bolts to the community because on the community leadership team you've got planning board members and so forth, but at the same time there's people representing the private sector too, and that's what we want on community leadership teams when we do this program. And so we really try and come back to the community with not lofty goals, but um, goals that are achievable, but yet at the same time might be things that are already happening or certainly in their master plan or certainly in their strategic 10-year plan and probably some of this stuff, but not all of it fits into that. I'm not sure what exactly, but access and awareness off I-94 stood off. Um, some of us came in off 94, coming um, east and then exiting in the rain city and we kind of like, mm, you know, a little bit um, unsure as to where to go. The signage we noticed way out there off, um, uh, coming in off 94 was quite small and really difficult to read. And the, the roads are like 55 miles per hour plus maybe, so it's really challenging to see those. Um, I see some heads nodding, it sounds like you've noticed that. Um, of course, limited lodging options um, in any small town, that's an issue. You guys seem to be sort of working towards changing that. Seasonal economy impacts, can you sort of navigate around those shoulder seasons? Uh, lots of discussion across the state on how to get around that stuff. Um, um, that's all I'll say about that. Local business stability, obviously is impacted by seasonal economies. Reaching targeted audiences, uh, you know, that's probably something your CBB, I would think, is addressing. Uh, well, maybe, maybe not. Aging storefronts, so some of this stuff was identified. Um, is kind of standing out as sore thumbs. Um, a couple people noticed that when we were downtown, they were very reluctant to sort of turn west, right, at the north end of town, right, where the cupcake shop is and stuff, and go west town towards some of those antiques because uh, we, people just didn't really, it didn't, it didn't draw us in, right? And uh, I see heads now in the audience as well. And so we're trying to figure out, well, that's obviously a challenge because Getting people to turn that corner and stay down that corner can obviously support local businesses and, and um, some of the development that's needed at that end of town, right? Uh, downtown traffic, parking, uh, of course, this, you know, that's a, that's a no-brainer. Um, directing cyclists to your downtown from trails, I kind of mentioned that earlier, that's something that people thought, wow, you've got this massive trail system that goes, looks like it goes, if I remember, certainly up to Port Huron, maybe slightly past that before it crashes. It goes from our, our area, Delgadet, uh, Port Huron, East Bay. Yeah, and then go south, of course, right. And so, um, directing cyclists off that, um, it's probably a message you've heard probably more than more than a few times, but um, it isn't something that we saw was emphasized uh, given given the close proximity of the trail to the actual downtown area. So big challenges, probably several you've seen before. Um, one statement best describes the destination. So this gets into community branding, which we're really not sort of some communities want this, you know, some communities are like, oh, we don't have an identity. We pretty much think you guys got that figured out. Your history is your, your brand, although I can't say that for sure. But, um, but we do provide this information because um, sometimes communities are looking for slogans of like, you know, how do we identify, how do we market, how do we, how do we represent ourselves, what do we have? And so we throw this up here, you know, maritime history prevails, small town charm on international waters. Um, unique location here and not too many places in the world where you can see these guys go by in a safe environment, right? Um, rural community revitalization success story just a stone's throw from Detroit and Canada. Um, so, you know, some ideas there um, for who to decide is up to you guys. And this question again gets at the assets that stood out to people and what might bring them back and what will they remember because regardless if you want tourists or visitors, right? People leave every community with some sort of story, and people are always wanting to talk about where they've been. And if they're gonna go to their neighbor and say, oh, I was in community A, um, you know, 
typically we're going to hope that that is a positive experience that they share with the, the person that they're interacting with. So um, we just like to ask that as part of the reflection piece. So um, green space, backing up, probably the shopping opportunities and places to eat, the freighters, uh, the welcoming people, the maritime history, um, friendliness, shop proprietors, accessible waterfront, uh, diverse and attractive architecture. Um, these are the things that have highlighted um, people's experience. Right on time. So, I'm going to get a little bit academic on you here for about three minutes. We have, uh, we're, going about, we're about ready to take a break. So, but before we do that, I want to explain this. This is called the Tourism Area Lifecycle Model. It's a model that was designed by um, Butler. You can see his name down in the, in the, in the bottom in the 1980s. Uh, has anybody seen this model before? Oh, I see. Great. Good. So, um, I'm going to explain it in, in, a, in a nutshell. And then during a break, we're going to do a bit of an activity for those that are interested in participating. But what happens in the tourism area life cycle is, is typically in stage one where the community is, is off, kind of off the beaten path. It's not a destination that many people know about. And typically in the discovery exploration phase, local residents become somewhat involved in tourism, they get entrepreneurial, they provide services, they might open up an ice cream shop or something small to accommodate visitors, but at the same time, like the tourism industry there uh, is next to nothing and the economy is not dependent on it whatsoever. And as you get further into stage two involvement, that begins to change, the, the current residents' behavior starts to slightly change, more entrepreneurship happens, um, some larger scale development takes place, a seasonal economy might begin to develop in this area. Um, more tourists come. Still off the beaten path, though, not very well known. Uh, and then what happens here in stage three is, is development, and that's where sort of outside, we, we say, external entrepreneurs come in, larger corporations, they invest in the areas. With that comes a lot of um, uh, economic benefits, of course. Uh, this is typically the part where some residents begin to disagree with the level of tourism development that's happening, and there might be some disgruntled folks for all for various reasons. And at the same time, um, larger scale development kind of begins to slightly push out local entrepreneurs and residents, and perhaps the cost of housing starts to go up, and people begin to slowly not be able to afford to live there. There's no fine line between all this stuff. It's kind of a blurry transition, but it does happen, and I'm not trying to scare anybody here, but what happens in consolidation then is that the development kind of stops. This doesn't imply that things get smaller, it just implies that the development slowed down. Perhaps there's moratoriums on space and height and so forth, um, limitations um, and, and things, and, 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 and typically a community or a business for that matter is completely dependent, or mostly dependent on tourism activities, regardless of season and so forth. And then uh, this kind of reaches a peak, and this is a, what's called a critical range elements of capacity. This is kind of like a sustainability breaking point, if you will, and um, communities are kind of wondering what's next. You know, where do we go from here? We can't build anymore, and we certainly can't uh, downsize to some extent. Um, Heavy emphasis on marketing takes place to maintain that uh, the beds and heads, heads and beds, hotels are filled up, so there's always continuous flow of economic activity. And so, kind of, this is a critical breaking point. Uh, you know, and, and communities often have a choice to either go through a rejuvenation period, where often the original point of becoming a tourism destination is is disregarded, and they. Um, try to leverage new assets and redefine themselves and come up with a different community brand to then perhaps start the cycle all over. Uh, and then, or they have figured out a way to stabilize it, which is feasible, or uh, communities may choose to, de to, to exit tourism altogether. So this isn't any sort of, um, there's no timeline on this. This isn't a 10 year projection. This isn't a 30 year projection. This isn't, um, uh, certainly a community can go from one to two and then they can bow out and skip three, four, five, and six and dismiss tourism altogether. There are um, 
there are other theories on this. A seventh stage would be abandonment, where a community chooses to just abandon tourism altogether, per se. Perhaps look for outside investments and you know, the golden egg, if you will, and something else. So I'm sharing this not because like this is what's going to happen to you, but I generally want to know, because we ask our assessors where Marine City might be on this chart. And again, all the assessors know nothing about Marine City until they were asked to research your community. Um, so what I have in the back is a, um, this map, I went and printed it out, and uh, it's got dry race laminate on it, and we've got about 50 people here with about five markers back there. We're going to take a 10 minute break, and I'm hoping that uh, if you want, you would go back to this chart on the back table there, grab a marker, and just perhaps put a circle where you think Marine City might be on this chart now. You don't have to do it, but I'm, I'm willing to bet a lot of you would like to. I'd like to see it, and uh, I'm going to share it with you, and we're just going to take a look at it. And then during that break, uh, let's come back in uh, 7.20. Yeah, 720, 721. Uh, so I don't know how many people circle, but I'm guessing well more than half. So most folks, you know, think that you're kind of in the development, somewhere in the middle between involvement and consolidation, perhaps around around development. And of course, we often see some folks that do select rejuvenation. I think it was Kathy earlier said that um, some folks are Rejuvenation are, or some folks' development is another person's rejuvenation. There's a lot of truth to that. What I've seen when I've done this in other communities is that oftentimes the folks that choose reju rejuvenation, they've been around a long time. They've been here a couple decades. They've seen a couple cycles of ups and downs, economic crashes and whatnot. And oftentimes the folks that kind of fall down here in development, they might be new to the community or they might be up and coming entrepreneurs or public officials to some extent. And, um, so this just helps me kind of understand um, where you guys are. It helps you understand too. You know, there's no definite answer tonight. So any questions on this? Useful? Okay, someone's. <laughs> so it, uh, we use that. Um, we use that life cycle model, I use it, I should say, um, for um, kind of strategic planning and tourism. I, Trevor City invited me up a few weeks ago to talk about that model because they're struggling with too much tourism. And so I introduced that model to them and an audience of about 100 people as a way to begin thinking about what happens when it gets kind of to this point. Also, at this point is when the, the ecology and perhaps the social challenges of the tourism begin to sort of impact the community too. So, good break. We're right on target here. We've got about 30 minutes, um, and we'll use all it up. We'll use all it up. So, we asked all the assessors to rate where they thought you might be on that life cycle. Very few, um, except I think maybe. Excuse me, two of us were familiar with the model, so they're not experts any more than you are, um, the three that didn't know the model, but you know, they had a look around and it's a pretty straightforward model. But some people, again, kind of all over the map. We have been in communities where all five people will point out the climb. Um, but again, it's subjective. We don't have any stats really to sort of say you missed this is it. So this is why people thought you were where you were, and I, I apologize, I don't know which, which um, response aligns with what. It, it might come out um, in the response, but um, um, I would say the last response is the rejuvenation. Green City appears to be going through a rebirth at this time, given the history of the town and the information shared from locals while there are while there and boutique shops spring up, springing up early, springing up, clearly a rejuvenation is taking place. <clears throat> so um, so anyway, just a little bit of sort of sort of philosophical way of thinking about your community and perhaps where you are, where you might be moving and, and inching closer towards or progressing for that matter.
Uh, so we get into suggestions at this point. So there's a few slides here. And again, these suggestions are, some are rooted in people's profession and some are rooted in what, you know, uh, we would like a perfect community to look like based on the assets that we experienced and things we saw. Um, um, a lot of emphasis on providing more historical interpretive information to tell the stories of Marine City. A lot of us, when we got here, realized uh, that the, the community has a lot of history, but we weren't really quite sure what. Uh, and those of us that live in the area um, are more familiar with it, obviously, than others, but uh, we thought emphasizing some of that maritime history um, more might, might uh, be a benefit to the community. Uh, more information on the Bell River, promote paddle sports on the river, uh, that should be plural, rivers. Um, uh, one person in particular, again, back to the biking routes, noticed uh, biking routes that are designated throughout the county, including Green City, but seemed to be no evidence except in hard copy maps that they picked up in one of the local businesses. Um, um, one person uh, suggested more lodging options uh, that would reach a, 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 perhaps a larger audience. Uh, with this person in particular had a lot, of, a lot of concrete suggestions given the planning background. Uh, they're looking at more um, complete streets types of improvements. Uh, hours of operation with museums, boat tours, visitor center. Um, this has already been discussed, um, encouraging people to turn the corners from the main streets and park and walk there. That's always a challenge in a lot of things. Um, <coughs> Uh, offer live music in the outside of the public parks, encourage more walkability. Um, some of the signs that we saw in town, there's kind of a movement going on nationally with signage in town instead of pointing out that um, the ferry is um, two miles down the road or one mile or, or so forth. It's actually putting the amount of time it might take somebody to, to walk to the ferry because it encourages people if they can see the distance in minutes from a sign, planners in the audience would know this. This is more of a placement and tactic that it would encourage people, it encourages people to park more throughout a community because then they can gauge how long it might take to actually walk to the ferry, to walk to the theater, to the brewery and stuff. So it's just kind of a psychological, um, for lack of a better term, tool to sort of encourage uh, less centralized parking. Um, so arts and culture, typically when we do suggestions, they fall into four categories. One is arts and culture, one is business, of course, one is community development, and one is recreation. Uh, we haven't seen too many other themes that come to play, although there's probably some that could. Um, some of this is just a repeat. Um, we did uh, notice that on the, on the websites, that the website for the chamber in particular was really, really well designed, but some of us wanted to know more about the businesses or how to access the business website. So at the time of doing the research, we didn't see that, although it could exist now. Um, of course, you know, this is probably something every downtown Michigan community wants at this point is a brewery. Perhaps there's somebody vying some of your building structure for that as we speak. Um, uh, more, some emphasis again on, on a diverse uh, accommodation options for people that have different budgets and so forth. Um, and then moving closer into the community section, some of the zoning ordinances were mentioned. Um, and as you can see, uh, looking at zoning ordinances for short-term rentals, that may or may not exist now. Chances are it, it is pretty limited. Uh, some counties across the state are taking proactive steps to, to leverage um, short-term rentals and benefit economically from them and while zoning properly for those at the same time. Uh, of course, this is probably something that is, is uh, in the works, I would think, at some point. Uh, public Wi-Fi everywhere so people can have accessibility and perhaps work remotely. That encourages um, uh, more entrepreneurial activity, focus on improvements of Broadway, more walkability, um, incentivize the use of the use of the side streets, I should say the side streets. So in a perfect world, a couple of us in our debrief thought that if there was a way to get the businesses to incentivize um, uh, visitors to park sort of off the main street, that the downtown main drag could be used for more activities and, and sort of a free flow between, between both sides of the street. 
Again, not something that can happen overnight. Um, some emphasis on larger signage coming in from I-94. Some of the signs we saw around town pointing to the ferry and pointing in certain directions were weathered. That was in particular more on the south side of town. You're probably familiar with those. Um, again, I mentioned this just a few minutes ago. I didn't realize it was in here or forgot, but add distance or minutes to downtown signage to encourage parking in the community. This is something that's pretty unique, and um, I would recommend researching it and perhaps trying it out. Uh, when it comes to recreation, um, one of us came across the city park list, the list of city parks, the PDF document that was pretty buried in one of the websites. We thought, wow, well, it's pretty rare that communities actually have a description of their community parks that are available to residents or visitors, and, but we found that that was really challenging to locate and thought, well, that might be worth highlighting a little bit better so people, one, can have a history of the parks, and two, their location, and perhaps hours of operation and so forth. Um, we thought that the St. Clair River um, was really uh, a missed opportunity. We didn't see, and information might be there, but none of us really saw information perhaps explaining the importance of the St. Clair River, the magnitude, water flows, things like that, the environmental education, the benefits of it. Um, if it exists, you know, we didn't come across it. Um, add opportunities for visitors to experience the water. Uh, we noticed, again, a lot of mention of the Blue Rays of St. Clair, but we just didn't see a lot of signage that, that let us know that we were there on a Blue Way, and so perhaps highlighting um, the resources that exist for that currently. Um, designated biking routes, increase the evidence of those, uh, interactive maps. A lot of this is pretty straightforward. We were pretty impressed with the, the ADA ramps that did exist, even though this is out in State Park. It was something that one of the visitors identified as, as uh, pretty unique uh, and something to be proud of uh, because accessibility for all users is not something that Michigan is really known for. So not to throw us all under the bus, but um, uh, so increase the number of benches in the waterfront parks. Um, you know, it's a matter of opinion. Um, and so that is it. That's the results of the program. So you'll see my slash marks here, and I want to just bring you back to where we are now. We have completed the results. The suggestions have been shared with you, and uh, now we're kind of at the end of the program. And this is where we get to the Q&A, if there are any questions, but um, I just want to recap what we've done. We did the FIT program itself, and then we have um, shared tonight's assessment results. And now is the time for questions and answers to me, specifically on the assessment uh, and what we did and perhaps how we draw, drew some conclusions and whatnot, or perhaps I can clarify something. So, yes, ma'am. How do you, um, I've been harping on this ADA for 20 years. How do you, and there's other people who came to me in back when we were when I was getting my teeth to say, well, you know, complaining that they have an issue and they have a parking bill that they can't get up and walk up the curb and how there's snow in the way. But even though I've been harping on this, it falls on deaf ears. So how do I, what do I do to, to just see this come through? Because actually it's a law, but we're, we're you know, we've done a terrible job at it. Because it just seems like nobody thinks it's, you know, the people even have told me, well, we really don't want those kind of people. For a long while, I was using a walker and a cane, and I just currently don't. But, you know, I actually was, was told, well, we really don't want you downtown, because we want the pretty people. Mm -hmm. And they're not pretty enough. I mean, you know, but you know how, nice how, how do you get past that? To, you know, well, to make, you know, to, to change the opinion of this, because, you know, just for, for the people that live here as well as for the people that live here. So I, I, I can, I'll answer in two parts. Uh, and one one way that it works uh, in other states, Travel Oregon has got this figured out, although there's probably yes, some loopholes there. Yeah. Right. Um, one is to show the economic impacts of disabled users. So that would be my advice. Um, and we could this could end up being a two-hour discussion just simply on that topic. But I would also say that Knowing what I know in the county, uh, St. Clair County Metropolitan Planning, quite a bit of ADA ramp. Um, 
has been established and inserted compared to some of the counties that we've done this type of right. program. So I'm pretty aware that some actions happen, but perhaps maybe you could reach out to them, some of those folks here tonight. Not to put you on the spot, but um, so yeah, I can't see anybody's name, but Kathy I guess. Well, I think, it, I think that often ends up being an MDOT issue. Okay. Um, it depends on where the signage is and where it's placed. We've done these assessments in other communities where they've spent millions of dollars on signage and we all drove right past it. Um, not to say the sign's in the wrong spot, maybe we're just um, uh, uh, seeing other things that draw our attention and not their sign. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know particularly that, but I, I think the planning folks would know more on that specifically. But again, your 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 the community's interest might not be to draw in more. Yeah, but yeah. Okay. I don't know what six is, so. Six miles. Oh, six miles? Okay. No, it's like six miles or what? Any other questions? So again, I, I can answer about the assessment um, itself and some technical questions, but there are certainly people in the room here tonight that have devote their 40-hour work week on some of this stuff. Laura? I want to thank you, Andy, because what a great presentation. What a valuable tool for Marine City and us at the county to use and apply to you know other communities. And it's just great information, and I know I've got lots of ideas that for myself that I need to do things that are easily achievable for my Blue Ways program that I need to work City. Of course, we've been trying to do a lot of that anyway. Money's yeah, that's often getting hanged out. How's it funded? Yeah. So I wanted to ask you, you elaborate quite a bit on the bike trails, the bridge to bay trail and stuff. And I know Lori has a her site that we've had something really, really unique in our area that's a bike trail that we're going to be putting in the new bridge that we're going to be putting in the new bridge that we're going to be putting in the new bridge that we're going to be putting in the new bridge that we're going to be putting in the new bridge that we're going to be putting in the new bridge that we're going to be putting in the new bridge that we're going to be putting in the new bridge that we're going to be putting in the new bridge that we're going to be putting in the new bridge that we're going to be putting in the new bridge that we're going to be putting in the new bridge that we're going to be putting in the new bridge that we're going to be putting in the new bridge that we're going to be putting in the new bridge that we're going to be putting um, you know, there's a million and one ways to get involved, and we hope we've identified some of those. And we certainly don't want to overburden Elaine's office with volunteers and things like that. But um, you know, there are there are ways to sort of you know be involved as a business, a community leader, and so forth. I wish I could ask this question, but I think I'm going to refrain because uh, we, we we might be here much longer than we thought. But it is something to consider. Uh, what we would like to see, and, and also not what we would like to see, but. I just want to point out that the program we did tonight, I was, it emphasizes three, these three bullet points. This is our role with the FIT, FIT program, one with the community leadership team, but two with the assessment teams and what I do around the state with others. And we, we focus on these three, and the last three bullet points here is really where the community and the community leadership team really steps up whenever they're ready, whenever they want to. And of course, you guys are already doing things regardless if we came here and did this program uh, anyway. But you know, it's really up to the community to integrate action items, uh, also take action on community improvements if, if, if they're wanted, of course, and um, overall improve the community well-being for residents and visitors, right? This isn't just about yeah. um, um, quality of visit. But. So anyway, um, so there's additional tourism programs that we do. I'm not here to sell those, but although if you're interested, feel free to contact me. There is a survey circulating right now. I think Joe did a great job of passing it out. It's really, really important for all of us that do this program across the state. Uh, the MEDC is watching what we're doing. Travel Michigan is watching what we're doing. Uh, regularly interact with those folks. There's a lot of uh, people paying attention. And so you guys will be part of the collective outcomes and impacts that get shared. Um, next month with uh, MEDC and the Main Street Directors and also in future conversations with Travel Michigan. So um, with that said, the program can't get better unless we have your opinion, negative and positive, right? So uh, I hope I brought enough. If you didn't get one and you've got a smartphone, you can use the QR code here and take it through your phone. 
any crafty people are welcome to do that. It would eliminate me from having an injury. You know? But um, so that is it. That's the program. We're, we're ten minutes early. I can stick around, stay warm. We will wait here to make sure everybody is out and.